murder, mystery, mayhem. Let's go see the tired old queen of the movies. Oh, Johnny, he's right here. And we are starring together in Syracuse in the Red House Art Center's production of La Cajo Fall, May 31st through June 10th. Starring the talented Dirk Lombard, directed by Cassie Abate. It's got a great cast, a great score, and if you're in the area, stop by, you're gonna love it. And now, let's go to the movies. Johnny, we hadn't done a film noir in a while, so I decided to do 1947's The Strange Love of Martha Ivers with Barbara Stanwyck, Van Heflin, Kirk Douglas, Elizabeth Scott, Janice Carter, and Judith Anderson. Now, this was a movie that had come after Stanwyck had done Double Indemnity. She had sort of set the tone with her Phyllis Dietrichson in Double Indemnity. We're both rotten. Only you're a little more rotten. When they gave her the Life Achievement Award, she said, Thank God for Billy Wilder. He taught me how to kill. After that, she started doing Dark Ladies. In this one, she is out and out venomous, and it's her most venomous role after Double Indemnity. There's only one way you'll find out. The plot is convoluted, so stick with me. It involves a murder when they were kids. Martha Ivers is the niece of this wealthy, wealthy dowager played by Judith Anderson. <laughs> Judith Anderson. Judith Anderson. Now, Judith Anderson, who, who Stanwyck laid around throws scissors in her face <laughs> in the Fury, so, you know. There will always be room for you at the Furies. There will always be a room for the won't there, Temple? Their character's never got along. <laughs> Anderson is a beast. And the movie starts with Martha is like 14 years old, and she's played by Janice Carter, who was the little girl in Now Voyager. And she runs off to join the circus with Daryl Hickman, the little boy that Gene Tierney drowns in Leave to Heaven. And the car opens up and it's the police and they found her and they go, you better come with us, your aunt is waiting. So the little girl goes back to the house and Daryl Hickman goes with her. She has to face her aunt. And you know, Judith Anderson is so scary. And she says, come here, Martha. Closer, Martha. Why do you continually defy me? You don't seem very sorry. I am. I'm sorry I was caught. Martha goes upstairs and she's going to run away. Meanwhile, there's this guy who's been like her aunt's assistant who has this young son, Walter. And Walter's the same age as Martha. And this guy has been trying to worm his way into the aunt's life so that she'll finance the kid going to college. If I could afford it, I'd send, send him, him to a school like Harvard. I guess I've mentioned it before. Many times. Walter, a little kid, goes upstairs and he's... And Martha's packing, she's gonna run away again. Suddenly there's a knock at the window. Sam, it's the little boy it's, that she was gonna run away with. And he comes in and she says, Sam, you came back for me. He says, yeah, I know, I always come back for you. You always get me into trouble. She goes, well, we're gonna leave right now. So as they open up the door, the cat gets out. And she goes, oh my God, my aunt hates that cat. Sam, get him, get my cat. And the cat's going down the stairs, meow, meow, going down the stairs. And the aunt hears the cat and goes out. Sam tries to get the cat and hears the ant coming, so he slides down the, the banister of the stairs and hides behind the stairs. And Martha comes out looking for Sam, says, Sam, where's the cat? And comes out and starts down the stairs and the ant is coming up and the ant sees the cat and she takes her cane and she beats the cat to death with her cane. And when she looks up, Martha's standing above her and Martha takes the cane and whacks the ant over the head. And the ant falls backwards down the stairs and breaks her neck and she's dead. So, she's dead. We were upstairs. We heard a noise and we came down. We saw a man, a big man. And you know, the father's not dumb. He knows what happened, but he knows that now he's got it made. He says, well, don't worry. That's exactly what you'll tell the police. Isn't that right, son? And Walter goes, yeah, that's right, father. Says, yes. Well, don't worry, Martha. I'll take care of you. We'll make sure everything's fine. And the camera pans out to the rain and you see Sam on the train leaving town. Bam, you go up. It's, it's 1947, it's the present. It's after the war, Sam's driving back into town. He happens to be passing through Ivers Town, which is called. He has a car accident, he has to get the car fixed. So he's gonna bum around town, see what's going on. And now he's Van Heflin. And he runs into this little girl named Elizabeth Scott. And Elizabeth Scott was a starlet in the making. She was Hal Wallace's 
protege. She was also in a scandal later on with Confidential Magazine. They accused her of being a lesbian in, in the 50s and that killed her career. Hey, Sam, I've got it coming. One thing you got coming, kid, is a break. In this one, she's sort of funny. She's always talking about her hometown, Ridgeville. No, I'm from Ridgeville. I can get a bus back to Ridgeville tomorrow. Maybe I won't get a bus back to Ridgeville. She won't stop talking about Ridgeville. It drives you crazy. It's my dad. He's the most cold-blooded man in Ridgeville. He takes her out, buys her a meal, says, what are you going to do? I don't know, I just got out of jail today. I had some bad luck. He says, I don't care. You know, you're a nice kid. Bad things happen to nice people. It's okay, you know. And they take a shine to each other, and she's cute, so, you know, it's working out. Maybe you think I've been trying too hard to get acquainted. Maybe you have. Maybe you think that's wrong. Maybe it's too soon to tell. He looks on a poster, and he sees Kirk Douglas, who is Walter, growing up. He says to the guy, Who do you marry? You from this town? Used to be. The old lady's niece, Martha Ivers. He says, Martha Ivers. So he says, oh, I think I'll, uh, I'll pay Walter a little visit. Then you get, bam, the camera pans and you go to the mansion. Car pulls up, Barbara Stanwyck gets out and she's Martha and she is done to the nines. She walks upstairs and there's Kirk Douglas. Now this is Kirk Douglas' first movie role. He's fantastic in this. He plays this weak-willed sort of alcoholic. I don't want to put words in your mouth. I'd prefer that you would. All right. When did you get drunk? Where did you get drunk? Why did you get drunk? Kirk Douglas didn't hit stardom until like two or three years later with Champions. So this was, he was working his way up. He wasn't like his contemporary Burt Lancaster who became a star with his first movie, The Killers. It took him a little time, you know. And Kirk Douglas was, a, I always thought, a better actor. He was really good at doing different kinds of roles and playing not so nice characters, you know. And he didn't mind doing that. I'd rather get drunk. I, I do get drunk. I did get drunk. And in this point, he's so in love with his wife. She's cold as a fish to him. She knows that his father had her blackmailed to the wall. And, you know, that they're the ones that know that she killed this old woman. She's hated him ever since. The next day, <laughs> he's in his office and Van Heflin shows up and instantly he gets sort of suspicious. And you, what have you done? <laughs> Knocked around, seen a lot, I guess. You know. And. Barbara Stanwyck happens to show up and she sees him. Sammy, Sammy Masterson. Sammy Masterson. Oh, oh. What are you doing here? And he says, well, I'm just driving through town. So he says, let's get together. She says, oh yeah, let's get together. She is so sexed up by him right away, you know. <laughs> Kirk Douglas is instantly jealous and he stands behind her and he says, why do you think he's in town? I don't know, why do you think he's in town? Well, maybe he's in town for a little blackmail. After all, he saw what happened. Sam will never tell. I'll never forget you saying that. What makes you think he will? What makes you think he won't? She said, well, then do yourself and both of us a favor and keep an eye on him. He says, I'll do that. So the next day, she invites Sam to come over. So Van Heflin comes over to the house, and they walk through the house, and they have this real sort of sexy cat and mouth sort of thing. How did it feel to become a man officially? I felt I'd been there before. How did you feel about becoming a woman officially? I felt I'd been there too. You know, but no, it's all this like sort of cat and mouse stuff. And she says, uh, you're back, you're back and you're never going again. He says, you're a married woman. She goes, oh, Walter, you're back and that's all that matters. She starts playing up to him. We're not kids now. No, Martha, we're not kids. Walter has ideas of his own and he hires the syndicate to beat up Van Heflin and, and throw him in a car out of town and that's exactly what happens. Well, he comes back. Corners Tony and she goes, Gee, Sam, I'm sorry. The goons, the, the ones who worked me over. They just wanted to scare you. O'Neill doesn't want you in town. They said if I didn't play with them, I'd, I'd go back to jail. I never wanted to go back to jail, just like I never wanted to go back to Ridgeville. You ever been to Ridgeville? No, I haven't been to Ridgeville. I hate Ridgeville. I hate jail. <laughs> he says, well, don't worry. You're just a kid. Who set you up? And she tells him, I think that big guy did, that Walter, that friend of yours. So he goes to the house, and he beats up Kirk Douglas. <laughs> And 
Martha comes in and that happens and he says, tell your husband if he ever comes near me again, I'll kill him. So he leaves and Barbara Stanwyck takes Kirk Douglas upstairs because he's hurt his hand and she proceeds to bandage his hand. It's one of my favorite things with Stanwyck. She just keeps bandaging his hand you know, it, it, like, it's, like it's a mummy. She, you know, and every, so what are you going to do? So why don't you leave him alone? So why didn't you do what I told you? Maybe you didn't, you know, when the time she ties up this bandage, his hand's like this. You know? <laughs> Van Heflin and her go for a drive and when they go to the drive, they make a fire and He's sitting next to her and she starts to cry and she says, When I lifted the cane, why didn't you stop me? You knew how much I hated her, why didn't you stop me? I wasn't there, Martha. And then I stood there afterwards. So now she knows she's just given him the real ammunition. So she grabs this fire stick and she comes towards him and she's going to belt him over the head with this burning log from the fire. And he wrenches it out of her head and he's bends her down and he kisses her. And Stanwyck does one of those <laughs> things where she kisses him, you know. <laughs> and they have hot sex, but you're not supposed to know that. The when, the when the scene changes, the fire is down low and they're redressed. <laughs> and then she says, what do we do now? And he says, what do you do now? She says, what is it you want? And he goes, what is it you're willing to offer? Because he wants to play along. He's not going to really do anything or blackmail her, but he just wants to know how far she'll let this go. She says, half. He says, half of what? Half of it all. She looks at the town. He goes, well, we'll draw things up tomorrow. So she goes back to the house, and she decides that she's got to kill him. And that's where I'm going to leave you with this story. This is a fabulous film noir. The lighting is absolutely brilliant. Stanwyck is at the top of her game. Uh, Van Heflin, I loved her. He and Stanwyck made BF's daughter together. Always very good together. He has a bit in this movie where he takes a coin and he keeps flipping it and it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Well, it was a great bit. But Stanwyck said to him at one point, she goes, let me tell you something, Van. That's a nice little bit, the comic bit that you've got there. But every time you do it and take the focus from me, I'm going to take the focus from you. And she pulled her skirt all the way. <laughs> up to her waist. So he said, all right, I got the picture. We're not going to do this. Elizabeth Scott had a career in film noir mostly that went from the late 40s right up into the mid 50s. She was Paramount's answer to Lauren Bacall. Uh, Lauren Bacall was such a huge star at, at Warner Brothers and they needed a husky voiced seductive blonde and so they took Elizabeth Scott. She's, she's interesting. She's very, very pretty. She doesn't have quite the twinkle and you know the, the insouciance that uh, Lauren Bacall has. But she's good. She's, she's good. And Van Heflin was always good. Van Heflin came up out of Broadway and Katherine Hepburn had noticed him early on and got him into, into movies in, in the 30s. He then went back to Broadway and he played Jimmy Stewart's part on Broadway in the Philadelphia story. He didn't get cast in the movie and that always irked Catherine Hepburn because the original stars of Philadelphia Story were Joseph Cotton, him, and Shirley Booth. And she gave those parts out to Cary Grant, Jimmy Stewart, and Ruth Hussey. But that often happened with the movies. But he won an Oscar early on in 1942 for playing a gangster in Johnny Eager. And when he came back from the war, he had a nice period where he was a leading man, leading right up to Shane, which was one of his last big leading man parts. But he did uh, Green Dolphin Street with Lana Turner. He did The Prowler. He did really, really good and solid work right up until he died. His last movie was Airport, where he played the bomber in Airport. Um, and Kirk Douglas, God bless him, just turned 100. What a fabulous, fabulous career. What an amazing actor. And what an amazing film this is. Barbara Stanwyck, Kirk Douglas, Van Heflin, Elizabeth Scott, and Judith Anderson in Lewis Millstone's The Strange Love of Martha Ivers. Whisper her name. Shh. Let's all go to the lobby. Come here, Martha. And Judith goes, Come here, Martha. Judith Anderson. Judith Anderson. The popcorn can't be beat.